Of course, mutual assured destruction was the, was the uh, principle that if the Soviets launched uh, uh, nuclear weapons against us, we would, we would launch against them and we would destroy them and probably both countries would be severely uh, damaged if not destroyed. And it, but it kept the peace for the 40 years of the Cold War. There are a lot of people out there will, that will argue today that deterrence will work against the Iranians. I think deterrence will work against the Iranians in terms of whether they would strike Israel or the United States or try to launch against Europe if they got the bomb. But the problem with adopting that as your policy is deterrence will not guard against a proliferation of nuclear weapons in that part of the world. If Iran gets the bomb, you can bet your life that Saudi Arabia and Turkey and other countries in the region are going to insist on getting the bomb themselves. So that's the real problem. So given that, what do you do? Well, I, I, I happen to think that the course that the Obama administration is now on is the right course. Uh, we're ratcheting up the sanctions. They, they're giving some indication of beginning to bite. Uh, we've been able to move the Russians and the, and the Chinese along a little bit for, toward more and more sanctions. I don't think anybody uh, wants to see a, a nuclear, uh, see Iran uh, with nuclear weapons, including uh, China and Russia. There are some very interesting accidents befalling Iranian nuclear scientists. And everybody should know, if they don't, why that's happening. Uh, and these are the ways I think we ought to approach this. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, I'm sorry, the Israeli government came to the Bush 43 administration and said, we would like you to give us overflight rights over Iraq. We were in, in, in possession of Iraq at the time in-flight refueling capabilities and bunker-busting bombs so that we can hit Iran, Iran's nuclear facilities. Bear in mind now that Iran has the right to develop peaceful nuclear capability. But President Bush 43 said, no, that is not in the national interest of the United States. We're not going to give you that. They then came to the Obama administration, uh, the Israelis, and asked for the same thing. And the Obama administration said, no, that's not in the national interest of the United States. We're not going to give you that. Having said all that, I, I think that at the end of the day, uh, the administration means it when it says we will not take the military option off the table. I don't think we should take the military option off the table. I think that at the end of the day, in order to keep Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons, we should use that military option if necessary. And we are the only country that I think can effectively get the job done. I, I think the Israeli, an Israeli strike might, uh, might delay, but would not prevent. A U.S. strike could be handled in a way that, that would prevent. Either way, if, if Iran is bombed because of a nuclear weapons development capability, you're going to strengthen the hardliners in Iran, and there is some opposition now to those, hard, to those hardliners. And that would be uh, an unfortunate a circumstance. General Martin Dempsey, who's chairman of the joint, U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, said publicly the other day that if Israel hit Iran's nuclear facilities, there would be uh, many American casualties in the region. All of these are reasons why I think it would be regrettable if Israel decides to do that. Uh, and that at the same time, while I feel that way, I feel also that we, at the end of the day, we need to be willing to use our capabilities if that's absolutely required to keep uh, Iran from getting the bomb. Because you can't have uh, nuclear proliferation ramp, running rampant in an area like the Middle East, and particularly under the circumstances that exist there today.